All right, let's get started. So today's part two of our three-part series of the macro nutrients. Hope did carbohydrates last Thursday. We should have that recorded up on our YouTube channel if you want to catch that. Um, today we're going to talk about fats, and then next Thursday I will be giving a presentation on proteins. So those are the three macronutrients that make up the calories of our diet, and we have them in our diet for specific reasons. So I'm going to go through fats today. Fats have been controversial, controversial. Um, recently, you know, there's always new data, new information coming out on whether they're good for you, what are they bad for you, how much, how little, where to get fats from. So hopefully I can kind of clear that up for you um, and not spark more questions from this. So um, today we are going to see talk about um, does my body need fat how much fat do I need in my diet for my total um, calorie consumption the different types of fat the omegas and what the heck those are um, I'll walk you through some food labels so you can take some actionable information and apply that to your lives and then I will have a time for some questions at the end so does my body need fat? Uh, yes, you do need fat. Um, we need adequate fat to support our metabolism, our cell signaling, the health of various body tissues, helps with our immunity, our hormone production, and the absorption of fat, soluble vitamins, K, A, D, and E, which are crucial for our health. Also, Visceral fat, which is the fat that we store on our body, inside our body, right? Not like the belly fat, but the body inside, or the fat inside our body is helpful to protect our organs, um, keeps us warm, and also helps keep our skin soft. So we never want to be 0% body fat that is extremely unhealthy. Um, probably a good healthy body fat for men is like 10 plus and women around 20 plus. Um, again, it depends on the person, it's individual, um, but definitely around those markers. Um, fat, which is also the fat tissue in our body also releases hormones. Um, two important ones are leptin and adiponectin, which leptin is secreted by our fat cells. Um, it sends to our brain, specifically our hypothalamus, and tells us we are hungry, which is good and bad, right? So when we crave something that's usually leptin signaling our brain, like eat what I'm telling you to eat, eat those cravings. And the more we ignore that, the more intense that signal gets. And then all of a sudden we just binge on whatever we were craving. So Eating fat helps definitely minimize that signal, but also it's okay to enjoy what you are craving, right? The indulgent in moderation, you know, just cause you're craving ice cream doesn't mean you get to go to Dairy Queen and get a large blizzard, you know? Um, but doing something to prevent you, prevent the maintenance, right? This is important um, from going on those binges. And also the more body fat you have, the stronger those signals are gonna be. So almost you know the people that need to lose weight have more fat are getting those stronger signals to the brain so it's almost harder to lose um, and adiponectin enhances your muscles ability to use carbohydrates for energy boost your metabolism increase the weight at which your body breaks down fat and then also it curbs your appetite um, so ways that you can boost your adiponectin levels is just move during the day and then replace some of your coffee carbohydrates with your diet with some um, avocados or olives so in short yes your body does need fat so with that how much fat do i need so before we get into that um, fat has about nine calories per gram which is the most of all three of the macronutrients so carbs i hope talked about had four calories per gram proteins also have four. Alcohol has seven, but we aren't going to do a lunch and learn on that. Um, 
So fat has almost more than twice as much calories per weight as those other ones. So it's very careful or be very careful when you're consuming it that you don't overeat because it's very easy to overeat fat. So of the fat in your diet, you should, of your calories, you should have 20 to 35% come from fat. So 20% would be if your diet is 2000, which it's roughly could be 500 more, could be 500 less. Um, but two, 20% is 44 grams of fat or 400 calories. And kind of remember these numbers because at the end, when, when we go through nutrition labels, you'll be able to kind of put an idea in your head of, of how much fat does this butter take up of my you know, daily allowance that I'm allowed. Um, and then 35% of your diet would be seven, 77 grams of fat or 700 calories. So the unfortunately, the typical American diet is a lot higher in fat with 35 to 40 percent coming from fat. Some people more depending on what they consume. Uh, but yes, and especially if you're keto, um, it might be a little higher. So types of fat, I'm going to go through this more in depth later, but this is just kind of a little graph to give you an idea. There are two main types of fat. We have saturated fat. And then unsaturated fat, which is broken up into two categories, polyunsaturated and monounsaturated. So just think of them as two different categories. There are saturated fat, which is um, solid at room temperature. So like our butter, our dairy products, the animal fat. So think of when you cook a beef patty, right? Animal fats is part of the saturated fats. Um, you put it in the pan or the grill. And as you cook it, you render that solid fat down into a liquid. If you're in a grill, it usually shoots flames up in your face and you burn your eyebrows. Um, or in a pan, you can kind of see like the drippings. Um, so that is how you determine saturated fat or unsaturated fat there. And then the tropical oils, tropical oils being um, coconut oil. If you ever mess with coconut oil, it comes in that jar. It's like white and it's solid. There is uh, palm oil and then cacao oil are all saturated fats and then polyunsaturated fats are usually all your oils um which you know we all know what those are so saturated fats so like i said saturated fats are typically solid at room temperature um and they're usually the bad fats right what we consider the bad fats the stuff that makes us you know have heart attacks and strokes and cardiovascular disease and all that um, there was this gentleman or person, Ansel Keys. He did a seven country study um, and he found out that a higher incidence of heart disease in countries where the, the consumption of saturated fats was high. So countries like the US, um, Canada, things where we have higher saturated fats in our diet, you know, we're, we're more of the our cultures in fast food and um, a lot of oils in our foods, things like that, versus a lower incidence in heart disease in countries where the consumption of saturated fat was low. So countries like Italy, Greece, and Spain. So he hypothesized that foods higher in saturated fats cause CVD or cardiovascular disease. Um, and that led to the Mediterranean diet, which we know today, which is usually what the doctors will recommend when we are, you know, have high blood pressure or um, we have blockage in our arteries, things like that. Um, so, and later it actually decided to, to be true that if we consume in excess, so that in excess would be over a 10% of our daily calories, we increase our LDL cholesterol as well as likelihood of a heart attack, stroke, and cardiovascular events overall. So less than 10% of our total calories should come from saturated fats. So a diet of 2,000 calories, 200 calories should come from saturated fat or 22 grams and nothing more. That's where we become in risk of those you know, heart attacks and strokes. And just to remind you of what saturated fats are, um, the next slide is that uh, um, graph again. 
which you'll see quite a bit because I would reflect back on that quite a bit. So like the animal fats, the dairy products and the tropical oil. So anything less, it depends person to person. You know, everybody's not the same. Once you get past that, if you hit 11% of your calories are coming from, you know, animal fats, you're not going to have a heart attack. Um, again, it's progressive and you have to do it more than once. And again, somebody who has a higher likelihood of um, cardiovascular disease in their family might have to eat less. So we go to see the doctor. Someone who doesn't have a history might not have to. Again, it's person to person. These are just general numbers um, for that. So foods with a higher proportion of saturated fat. So as you can see, butter, whipped cream, whole fat milk, cheese, yogurt, coconut, cacao butter. Um, you can see that they're not 100% saturated fat, right? They're broken up into two different ones. So just gives you an idea of what different types of fats are in our foods that we are eating. And just so we're aware of it, so we don't overconsume saturated fat. And saturated fat's not unhealthy for you, only when you get um, past that 10% mark, right? Poison's always in the dosage. Uh, we all can die from water if we drink too much water, right? Water's not bad for us. So, hold on one second, where are we at? Okay. Next is the monounsaturated fat. So, <clears throat> monounsaturated fats are those oils from like the nuts, right? Canola oil, almond oil, walnut oil, olive oil, things like that. Um, so, they are typically liquid at room temperature, but they can turn solid when chilled. So, olive oil is, is an example. They definitely help reduce bad cholesterol levels in the blood, which can lower the risk of heart disease or stroke. So again, replacing some of those saturated fats after we get to the limit of the saturated fats of 10% with some monounsaturated fats. So, you know, using your olive oil, um, things like that, peanut oil, avocados, definitely good when our limits are getting high from a saturated fat. Polyunsaturated fats, the other version of an unsaturated fat. So polyunsaturated fats, uh, mostly seed oil, so fat, safflower, sunflower, canola oil, um, oils from fish. So if you have really oily fish, those um, have polyunsaturated fat. So they, again, they are liquid at room temperature. Um, oils rich in polyunsaturated fat provide essential fats that your body needs but can't produce itself. So we have essential nutrients and non-essential nutrients. Non-essential would be our body can produce it uh, itself. So we don't necessarily need to consume those nutrients because our body can make them. But essential would be that our body can't make it. So we need to eat these foods to get those vitamins and nutrients, um, which We'll talk about later when we talk about the omegas, threes, and sixes, but it's very important to get those polyunsaturated fats. Um, so soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, salmon, mackerel, herring, and trout are all examples of places that you can get those polyunsaturated fats. Again, here's a little breakdown of the proportions of unsaturated fats in food. So the the green one is the polyunsaturated. The yellow is the monounsaturated. So as you can see, like flax seeds is super high in polyunsaturated fats. Um, avocados are high in monounsaturated fats and not so high in polyunsaturated fats. Um, and when you're consuming, you don't necessarily need to be super cognizant of of you know, how many grams of polyunsaturated fat am I getting in a day? No, not necessarily. I mean, don't go crazy with it. You definitely can. It's overwhelming. It's probably more detrimental to your house if you focus on it too much, then you're getting benefit. But just overall, just be aware of the foods you're consuming and what can happen. So trans fat, this is the nasty one. This was banned in 2018, actually. Um, it's still a little prevalent. Um, in our food for some reason. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why or how. I mean, that's 
political. Um, but trans fats are created in an industrial process that adds a hydrogen to the liquid vegetable oils to make them more solid. Basically, highly processed foods will use trans fats to make them um, stay on the shelf of grocery stores longer, right? Increase their shelf life. So if you look at the back of a um, food label and you see partially hydrogenated oils, it's usually trans fat, which are super bad for you. The World Health Association, the WHO, recommends that people limit their consumption of trans fat to 1% or less of their daily calories. So barely any. I think last time I had a trans fat, I was eating a cinnamon roll from Quick Trip and it had trans fat on it. Like I didn't know that they still were allowed to do that. That was years ago, but still check. Um, you can see them a lot of times in crackers, cookies, cakes, frozen pies, fried fast foods and other baked goods like the cinnamon roll that was on Quick Trip. Um, it just sits on the shelf. Um, trans fats, Trans fatty acids are directly linked to increased risk of CVD, cardiovascular disease, breast cancer, complications during pregnancy, colon cancer, diabetes, obesity, and allergies. So trans fat's not good. There are, and you guys actually might know more, more about this than me, but there are a few naturally occurring trans fats um, called ruminant trans fatty acids. These get their names because they are created via bacteria in the stomachs of ruminant animals like cows, sheep, and goats. Um, unlike industrially produced trans fatty acids, ruminant trans fatty acids aren't associated with negative health effects. So those are good, not good, but they are bad for you. So the omegas, threes, sixes, and nines. This is where it's gonna get a little confusing. I'm not gonna to go too in depth with this um, just because it gets too much. So there's monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats that are also known by omegas. So back up to the um, graph. Let's see, when is that one? So this one. So we have saturated fats, right, on the left, and we have unsaturated fats on the middle and the right. So unsaturated fats are broken up into poly and then mono. And then the polyunsaturated fats, those are the omega-3s and the omega-6s, and the monounsaturated fats is the omega-9s, okay? So, uh, Omega-3, 6s, and 9s. Omega-3 s and omega-6 fatty acids are two essential types of polyunsaturated fat. So remember, essential is the ones that we have to consume in order to get those nutrients. Or omega-9 fatty acids, um, they are non-essential where our body can produce them. So going a little bit into omega-3 fatty acids, um, which we'll talk about where you get those so you will get them from fish is a great source. Um, so like anchovies, delicious, right? No. Bluefish, herring, mackerel, salmon, sardines, sturgeon, lake trout, tuna, pretty much any oily fish is gonna have omega-3s. So they reduce triglycerides, a type of fat in the blood. So if you ever got your biometric screenings, that's a main marker that they will determine. Um, your health by, reduces the risk of developing an irregular heartbeat, uh, um, slow the buildup of plaque, a substance compromising fat, cholesterol, and calcium that can harden and clog your arteries, and then it can slightly lower your blood pressure. So omega-3s are good. And this is one thing in our diet that we don't get a lot of. So focusing on these types of foods, so the fish, yes, but you also can get omega-3s from like eggs when they're omega-3 enriched, um, flax seeds, flaxseed oil, walnuts, soybeans, tofu, canola oil, and then fortified foods that have the omega-3 enrichment to them. Uh, so omega-6 fatty acids, these are good too. We just eat way too much of them. I think the Western diet on average, uh, the ratio is like 16 to one or 
20 to 1 for omega 6s to omega 3s. So we consume so much of these. Um, we, the ratio should be a 4 to 1. So 4 omega 6s to 1 omega 3. So going back to this page, um, you know, crush those polyunsaturated fats that have omega 3s in them. You know, focus on getting the fish in your diet regularly. I mean, it's tough. Fish is not always the best unless it's fresh, right? Salmon's good. Um, you know, looking for those omega-3 enriched foods, things like that um, to help get us and also reducing the risk or the consumption of some of these omega-3 fatties foods, fatty acids. Um, so omega-6 mostly commonly, well, you don't need to really know that, but at least five to 10% of our food calories come from omega-6 fatty acids. Diet usually have an abundant amount of omega-6 is coming from vegetable oil in the form of koi, corn, and safflower oil. They are considered essential fatty acids because the body cannot make them. So omega-6s could help with, you know, all that stuff. I mean, they are healthy for you. I'm not saying don't eat them, but also focus on eating those omega-3s. So ADHD, breast cancer, eczema, high blood pressure, MS, menopause, osteoporosis, the list goes on. They are extremely good for you. Just that our diet, because we have so much vegetable oil in our diet, our omega-3s are high. So back to our list, polyunsaturated fats has the omega-3s, flax oil, and then oils from fish, focus on consuming that. Um, Omega-6s, the seed oil, so canola oil, and you do get omega-3s from canola oil. Like I said, those going back to those charts with the green, you know, just like polyunsaturated fat, those are broken up into, you know, just because they have omega-6s, that doesn't mean they just have omega-6s. Um, Omega nines, so these are non-essential. So this means that our body can create these fatty acids. Awesome, They're, it's amazing. So <clears throat> they can be found in canola oil, sunflower oils, olives, avocados, nuts, um, and they're definitely beneficial when eaten. Unlike omega threes and sixes, fatty acids, omega nine fatty acids are produced by the body, but there is some benefit to eating them in your food. So omega-9s help with heart disease, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, um, plaque buildup, and then preventing strokes and heart attacks. So <clears throat> what to look for? So because we, um, sorry, Rochelle just popped in, <laughs> distracted me. Um, because we don't get enough omega-3s, it is very important if we can't eat fish every day to supplement with a fish oil, right? So when we're looking at buying a fish oil pill, avoid purchasing a fish oil that comes, that claims to be not required to be re refrigerated after opening. If you're obviously getting a capsule, those don't need to, need to be refrigerated, but looking at a fish oil supplementation, uh, making sure it comes in a dark brown glass bottle, the light can oxidate it. Um, and then also look for one that's between 1,000 and 1,200 milligrams of fish oil, um, just because they're diluted with things. And then uh, at least 500 milligrams of DHA and EPA per day. Be careful, some capsules contain only 300 milligrams. You may need two, just look. And then obviously quality matters, just like every supplement, um, making sure you see the GMP stamp. Um, just because then you know for sure it's it's a quality product. Supplement market is something else. So quality matters. So food labels, when we're looking at the food labels, uh, this is definitely important. Um, so as you can see, we have natural Skippy peanut butter, delicious. So um, there's 200 calories per two tablespoons. Can you guys see my mouse? Hopefully you can see my mouse. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So 
the nutrition facts. So the serving size, so that means two tablespoons right here is the amount of food they are measuring in calories down here, right? So there's two tablespoons. That means there's 16 tablespoons in this jar. So in those two tablespoons, there is 200 total calories, 160 from fat. So by seeing that, you know that there's a lot of calories from fat. Majority of this food is fat. That means 40 calories are coming from carbs or protein. So this definitely isn't a protein source. I mean, it is, don't get me wrong, it is. I just won't consider it a protein source just because in order to get a decent amount of protein, you're gonna have to eat a lot of calories from fat. So in those two tablespoons, 18 grams are coming from fat, two grams from saturated fat and the rest from unsaturated fat. Since we know peanuts are a monounsaturated fat, it means they're coming from monounsaturated fat. Um, one gram of sugar, this is a good one. This peanut butter is not bad. Usually if you get, you know, the Skippy regular, you'll see a little bit more grams of sugar. Um, but peanut butter is definitely a good source of monounsaturated fat, which is technically the good fat. Um, you know, we have all the benefits from that, uh, where is that one? Of this, they help um, reduce your bad cholesterol levels in your blood, lower the risk of heart disease and stroke. So good stuff. Next one, whole avocado. I could not find a good nutrition label for an avocado that wasn't, you know, one third of an avocado. Um, I got a full one just so we can see, because usually, you know, we have to eat a full one within a day. Um, otherwise they go bad, you know how that goes. So one avocado, there's 250 calories, which is for a vegetable, quite a bit. There's 23 grams of fat in one avocado, which necessarily isn't bad. 15 grams are coming from monounsaturated fat, which is the good one. Three grams from saturated fat. Um, and then three grams from polyunsaturated fat, which is omega-6s from here. So again, high, high in calories, good, good fat. That's a good one. Land O'Lakes butter. The funny thing is I first did this presentation like six years ago at a different place. When I was going through updating everything, I'm like, Land O'Lakes butter, look at that. Some sort of irony in there. Um, so when we look, and this might not even be a, I didn't even look to see if this was a current label, but just for educational purposes, no one get mad at me. I know this is the old um, symbol and design, but nostalgia. So serving size, one tablespoon. That means there's 100 calories in one tablespoon, 100 calories from fat, 100% fat. It's butter. What do we expect? Um, total fat, 11 grams. Seven grams from saturated fat. Zero grams of trans fat. Nice job, Lando Lakes. Um, so again, just being aware. Remember, saturated fat is seven grams. Um, up in the saturated fat, we talked about how much we should get per day. So let me see if I can bust up there quick. So for a 2,000 calorie diet, we are allowed. You know, everyone's a little different. I'm not saying you're allowed. You can do what you want. Um, but 22.2 grams of fat for a 2,000 calorie diet. And again, you might be less than that. It might be more than that. Um, so that's half. One tablespoon is half of your allowance for the day if you're consuming 2,000 calories and you don't have any prior. you know, heart disease or anything like that. So again, not bad for you. Up to 22 grams is good. Going past that, you know, I won't sit down. You know, if you have butter in your eggs, you butter your toast, and then you have popcorn at night, um, you're probably going to go over your daily allowance. If you use, I mean, let's be honest, who's putting one tablespoon on their popcorn? Uh, not me. Um, so just being aware of that. And again, one day is not going to do anything bad. Yeah, it's just the compounding of if you do it every single day, weeks and weeks and weeks, just like one meal is not going to make you skinny. One meal is not going to make you fat. 
you know, 30 grams of saturated fat in a day is not going to give you a heart attack. It's just those compounding effects, um, lifestyle effects. Almonds. Great snack. Oh, I got to get down there. So as you can see, serving size is one ounce or about 23 almonds. Um, calories, there's 160 calories and about 23 almonds, 120 from fat, 14 grams of total fat, one gram of saturated fat. And you can kind of see this one's nicely split up between polyunsaturated fat, three and a half grams, monounsaturated fat, nine grams. So again, just being aware of how much fat you are consuming in your day. Uh, next one, coconut oil. This one is controversial. Uh, the keto diet, things coming up and all that. And I'll, I'll walk you through it. So one tablespoon is 130 calories. So one tablespoon of butter is 100 calories. This one is 130. So it's definitely more dense. Um, 14 grams of total fat. Almost all of it is saturated fat. So if you're doing keto and you put, you know, a tablespoon of this in your coffee, you know, it's up there monitoring your saturated fat throughout the day. I mean, if you have, have you know, heart disease or high blood pressure or something like that, I definitely recommend coconut oil just because it is so high in um, saturated fat. I'm not saying you can't use it on your hair or whatever. There's, I don't know. I think it does everything nowadays. Who knows? But just being aware of that. Any questions on fat? I know it's a lot to take in. Nothing, no questions. Well, I am done then. You guys are all set. This is recorded. It will be um, on YouTube. You can always reach out to me individually. Make sure to become a member of LOL Fit. We have virtual classes, uh, a lot of good information we send out on that. Or if you're in the office, come work out. Um, yes, that's about it. Have a wonderful St. Patty's Day. Eat your corned beef. It's good for you. High in protein, high in fat. Um, and I will talk to you guys next week when we talk about protein. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good day.